Hey everybody, got a new purchase here. Some assembly required. It's a Northern Tool brand, or I purchased it there anyway. Uh, five by eight, one ton trailer. I wanted a little trailer, trailer to pull behind my Toyota Tacoma. And this is what I decided on. I, I looked for some stuff on Craigslist. I couldn't quite find what I wanted. And there's always some deal about, oh, I don't have the paperwork, or I don't know if the lights work, and it needs a little work, or maybe it doesn't. I don't really know. My buddy owns it, all that typical runaround. So I decided for $530, this really isn't that bad of a deal. The only extra thing I have to pay for is a plywood deck, which this doesn't come with. It's pretty much all you see here is what it is. It's just a frame. <clears throat> and, of course, this is the rest of it. Lights, wiring, hardware all that instructions anyway so I'm just laying everything out and my first my first impressions yeah it's all getting rained on but it's gonna get rained on anyway here's a spring pack pretty decent spring pack I I like it three leaf the axle I think it's a little chintzy it's just a piece of stamped C channel looks like a 3 16 material and the spindle here's a spindle it's machined and it's just stuck in there and goobered on with some weld it seems like there and there are the two only real joints between the spindle and the axle shaft so that 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 I don't know. I know it's going to hold the weight, but I just don't particularly like it. I mean, other than that, all the all the parts and pieces look fine. You know, I mean, it seems decently heavy duty for what it is. And the safety chains and a a little latch for the for the lock. So anyway, that's just an overview of the my impressions right out of the box. So I'm going to put this together and walk you through any, any issues I come across. And you can see the finished product and, and see what it looks like. Well, after a couple minutes of kneeling in the mud in the rain, I had the genius idea of putting it up on milk crate so I don't have to get the frame all muddy and get myself all muddy. So, uh, not a bad idea. Or lay a tarp down, or do it on a sunny day. Okay, a note to you, uh, novice, uh, wrench turners out there. I learned this one the hard way a couple of times. When you're assembling something like this with a lot of bolts or a lot of fasteners, don't put in the first bolt and tighten it, then put in the second bolt and tighten it, because you're going to mess something up and holes aren't going to align. So I put all of these in, uh, finger tight. And I wasn't really sure how you were supposed to make sure the trailer was square or the frame was square before you tightened everything down so I looked in the instructions and it didn't really tell you anything it did tell you to put the uh, the axle together and put it on first and then assemble the the tow bar so you see here's the frame and then this is where the uh, the ball hitch is going to be connected and there's two holes in this bar and two holes in that bar and it bolts onto the frame and it seems to me that that will sort of triangulate the frame there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to skip, I'm not going to follow the instructions. I'm going to skip putting the axle on for now. I'm going to put the tow bar on. And hopefully that should straighten out the frame and keep it square. And I'll check it with a, with a carpenter's square just for kicks. And then I will tighten all the bolts down. Okay, one thing that the instructions should have told you but did not is to use one washer per bolt. Uh, the instructions did not say it all, so I just assumed to put one washer on either side. I should have counted all these nuts and bolts first, but I didn't really feel like it. But as it turns out, you're only, I, there's only enough washers for you know to have one for each bolt. So the um, the the rule of thumb that I'm using is that. 
whatever, like for example over here, um, this this hole, he, hole here and this piece is a slot and the hole here in the frame is a hole, just a round hole. So the slot gets the washer and the hole gets the nut on it. So depending on, on which joint, um, there's a different situation, but I'm just keeping the washer on the, on the slot side because you need the washer to bridge that larger gap. Okay, so my idea of, of triangulating the frame with these two tow bars didn't really work because the, the holes are also pretty sloppy in, in, in those two pieces. So I, I, I bolted them in loosely, just like I did everything else, and then I used my carpenter's square there and just checked each corner. And there, there's not any one corner that's perfect. You see there's a little wobble there, but I got it so that each corner is off by the same amount. Um, and I got it just about as close as I can, so now I'm going to tighten these bolts down. Alright, so I got all the bolts tightened down so far. To, uh, to recap, I started off by tightening that bolt and that one and that one, and that one on the tongue to uh, keep everything square. And then I tightened all the, all the cross rail bolts. The uh, spring, spring hanger bolts I, I tightened beforehand. It doesn't really matter when you tighten those, there's nothing attach, attaching to them. Well, nothing to, that makes the trailer square anyway. So then I tightened all the cross rail bolts. And then lastly, I tightened these six bolts here And the, those six under there, uh, although, you know, under is on top, this uh, trailer is being assembled upside down right now. And uh, one last thing to mention, I did give all of the, the bolts a nice snug with the, with the uh, guten tight wrench. It's the German torque wrench just to make sure they're nice and snug. Don't over tighten them, you don't want to strip anything out or whatever, but just make sure they're nice and snug. Okay, we're at the point that I need to put the uh, tires on now and the hubs. Um, I, I made a note before that it said um, maximum speed, speed 55 miles an hour. There it is. But I was looking at it and nowhere on the tire itself it actually says that. It just, it's just that, that crappy stamp on the rim. So uh, maybe that's not the case. If it doesn't say it on the tire, as far as I'm concerned, it's a regular old highway tire. That's what it looks like. It's a, you know, Innova. I think I've heard that name before. I think it's an off brand. It's a Ultra Runner. So anyway, there's a inner and outer bearing in there, and there is a grease zerk on the uh, on the, the back side of this hub. And you see it's got some mystery china grease on it, and not a whole lot of grease in there. And I like to grease things, and when I do grease this, it'll be a lot of pumps of the grease gun to fill that up. So I'm going to take some of my uh, Valvoline multi-purpose grease here. And uh, just globber it on in there, and that'll make my my first greasing a little easier. Less pumps of the grease gun, and also I don't have to fill up the grease gun as much, which is not one of my favorite jobs. Okay, the uh, the wheel and hub is on the axle. One important thing to mention to uh, to uh, my viewers that may not be familiar with wheel bearings or axle nuts or anything like that. When you, you slide on the hub, you slide on the outer bearing, and then the washer and the nut right here. When you tighten this nut down, you do not want to crank it tight. And you, you'll notice that because the, the, the wheel won't spin very well. It'll be very stiff. Uh, it didn't say anything specific in the manual, or the, the, the you know instruction manual. But I, I did it like I, 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 do, I did with my uh, wheel bearings on my truck. I tightened this nut down tight to kind of seat the bearings and then I backed it off then backed off so it was loose and then just brought in so it was finger tight and then lined up one of the slots in the castle nut with a hole so you see the the wheel spins fine but if I try to shake the uh, the wheel 
it doesn't you don't hear the bearings rattling or anything so that's that's an important thing to remember so you don't destroy or prematurely wear out or heat up your wheel bearings this is what my shop teacher in college referred to as the Beijing Bureau of Standards this is the other wheel here's the hubcap dented right out of the box and look at that cotter pin I didn't even touch it that's exactly how it looks when I pulled the cap off somebody wasn't having a good good day at the sweatshop huh Oh well. One more thing. On the back of the hub, you see there's a, a grease seal there. And uh, you want to be careful not to damage that. So, to make sure you don't do that, lube up the spindle a little bit with some grease. That's that. This is the surface where the uh, seal will ride. So, uh, that'll give the, the seal a little bit of lubrica initial lubrication before the grease really starts moving around and also those threads there are a seal killer so be very careful when you're sliding that hub and tire on there make sure not, not to catch the the uh the seal on those threads all right i got the uh the fenders on and the company's horrible excuse of a spare tire bracket if they called that a cross member, I would have been perfectly happy, but that sure as hell isn't a, a spare tire bracket. I don't know how you're supposed to attach a spare tire to that. Anyway, that's in. Fenders are on. on. You know, same deal. Just put them in with the bolts loosely, then tighten them all up so everything lines up. They went on fine. The only thing that I think I might do, these are some deadly corners. And uh, you know that you're going to walk into that when you're strapping down a load one day. And if, if you're wearing shorts especially, you're going to regret that. So I think I'm going to zip those corners off with my angle grinder when I'm done. Because I know I'm going to walk into that and it's going to make my day into a bad one. All right, now moving on to the lighting. This is one of the, uh, the side of the, the marker lights. This is the front corner of the trailer. And that wire goes to that hole, and there's two self-tapping screws that go into the frame in those two smaller holes. But you see there's a, a ground strip on the light here. And I couldn't rightly put this thing on without using my Dremel and grinding a little, a little shiny spot there for that to ground again. There's the, I put the tail lights on. This tail light also has the holder for the uh, the um, license plate, and the license plate holder interfered with the exit of these wires. And it would have worked; it just would have squished the wires up against the housing. And I didn't really like that, so I cut it and bent it back. Small, small issue. I didn't, but I just didn't quite like it, so I so I changed it. Well, I'm putting the. Uh, the wiring harness on and here's the uh, the ground connection they give you I don't like that that's a that's a piece of shit let's get a let's get a better one on there okay so I've been working on the wiring on the trailer working on finishing it up and kind of sunny it's hard to see but the two brake lights are on on my truck but that's clearly off and this is the only light that actually works the two marker lights don't work. So I was doing some troubleshooting and uh, I'll show you what I found. Firstly, I thought it was a bad ground, which in the case of this, it is because, and the manual makes no mention of this, this is where the ground wire of the trailer harness they give you, this is where the ground wire goes. I uh, ground the paint off and, and uh, so it's bare metal where that screw and eye goes. But this is painted. This is painted. These two pieces are bolted together. Follow down the tongue. These two pieces are painted and they're bolted together. And then somehow that ground is supposed to go all the way back and uh, 
make the trailer frame ground, but everything's painted so the connection's very bad. So I ran a just a, a wire, my own wire for ground to test it, and I was, I was able to illuminate that light over there. But I still couldn't illuminate these two marker lights. So this is the problem. They give you these crappy connectors, these uh, guillotine style connectors, which are probably not automotive connectors because they're all open to weather and rain and everything and salt. But I use those and they, they don't work at all. They, they must have sheared off a piece of insulation between the connections so it's not not making a uh, connection from power to the light bulb. And also, this isn't causing any problems, but look at what they give you for connectors for the tail lights. You're supposed to find those in house wiring, not trailer wiring or automotive wiring whatsoever. I just use these just to hook them up and make sure everything works, but I will replace these with either a soldered connection or a proper butt connector and some heat shrink tubing. But I think it's a joke to give, the, give you this. This is just ridiculous. So I'll show you what I mean. I took apart the this marker light here and took off the lens and I took out the bulb and I used my multimeter. Turn it on. I verified which of the two terminals inside here were ground. It's the bottom terminal here. Now I'm going to touch the ground tab. That works. So now the top terminal, if I put this in here and I put this to my to my makeshift ground wire, I should get 12 volts. I don't know if I can if you can see the screen of the multimeter, but it's just an open circuit. And I imagine it's the same with the other with the other light. So I'm going to get rid of these connectors and use some butt connectors and that should that should fix everything. But it's a real shame they give you those low quality connectors for what's really a, a pretty decent trailer for the price. So you're really going to need to upgrade the wiring a little bit and I suggest running a dedicated ground wire from each of the four lights to the ground terminal on the tongue. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, I figure I might as well show you how, I, how I'm fixing these guillotine connectors. I already cut the connector off and I stripped the ends. I have my soldering gun heating up, or my soldering iron rather. And I have some wire of similar, similar thickness. And I have a piece of shrink tube that I already slid over one of the wires, and I'm going to slide that over the solder connection when I'm done, and I'll heat shrink it. So I'm just going to wrap these wires, these stripped wires, around. Of course, they're not really going to want to stay on there, so... Okay, so I have some <coughs> some flux in it in this uh, syringe here. I'm going to put on to help. Oh, a little too much to help out the connection. Now I used to hate soldering, and the reason is is I didn't really know what I was doing because I was ne I never seemed to be able to get. The joint hot enough for the solder to for the soldering iron to melt the solder, but the trick is when you put your soldering iron on the joint, melt a little bit of a little blob of solder right onto the tip of the of the iron, and then touch the iron to the connection with that blob of solder, and that will give the soldering iron tip more surface area touching the joint, and it'll transfer more heat. It'll heat up the joint a lot faster. And without that um, heat bridge, it's called, it's, you're never going to heat your joint up. And then once the heat has flowed into the joint, then you feed your solder into the joint, not onto the iron. And you'll notice it just sucks the solder, solder right up. So I'll do that. I'll touch it. I'll touch some to the tip.
feed it in. Until everything is solder colored. And that's your joint. And then the rest goes without saying, I don't need to show you how to shrink heat shrink tube. That's it. Give it a little while to cool before you mess with it because not all solder cools immediately and solidifies. That's the joint. And that's a lot better than those guillotine connectors. So another thing I don't particularly like about these lights, not a big deal, but they're held on with self-tapping screws. There's two self-tappers that go into an undersized hole in the frame, and I don't really like it. So I'm placing it with these little, little machine screws. And I just think that'll be a more secure attachment. And I'm also doing that with the, with the ground here. I drilled it out. I'm going to reattach that ground wire with the, with the machine screw that goes all the way through. So I just think it's a, it's a much more secure connection. Success. Got all my lights working now. It's just like I said, the ground issue and the issue with the guillotine connectors. So, there's one of my finished joints. Same on the other side and this white wire you see dangling here. That's my dedicated ground wire that I made. Started out right there, connected it to the, to the short uh, ground wire on the harness with uh, can use the ring terminal then went down here and There's the screw there with the with the little ground tab on it for the marker light So let's see the wire came up from the tongue over there then it runs to the back of the trailer and then it runs over to the other the other marker light and same with over here the, the wire runs all the way down the the screw is also is again the ground on the tail light and then the wire tees in and goes across to the other side you may be asking why do I have all this extra wire dangling around that is because I have plans to uh, widen and lengthen the trailer a little bit with some either channel iron or, or box tube. I want to give it maybe another foot on either end and eight inches on either side just to make it a little bit larger and a little bit wider. So I made those ground wires with that in mind. And if I don't ever do that, if I end up keeping it as it is, you know, it's no big deal. I'll just wrap up the wires, which I'm going to do anyway, and, uh, you know, just keep them out of the way. Now one last thing to do is to break all these lug nuts loose and retorque them. Because as you can see, these are all pretty much finger finger tight or finger loose. So those are all those are all loosened. I'm not sure if it's a metric or SAE hex, but I'm using a uh, 13 16 socket. And it fits pretty well. So I'm sure you know the, the drill. You just torque, torque them opposite. And this is a five lug. So in this case, you'd, you'd torque them in a star pattern as if you're going to draw a star. So see from here to here to here to here to there. And personally, what I'd like to do, I don't know if anyone else thinks it's a good or bad idea, but I torque them to about half the torque value. Then I go around again and torque them to the full value, and then torque them again to the full value. Do go around again because sometimes when you tighten one, the uh, the whole rim will sink in a little bit and it'll make another one loose. So I I go around twice uh, at the full value, which is 85 to 90 foot pounds. All right, one last thing on the uh, trailer. After it's all done, I was reading this in the in the manual, if you want to read it yourself, you can hit the pause button. It 
Anyway, it says there is a, let's see, where does it say? The nut retaining plate needs to be pressed back while the nut is tight in the adjustment nut they're talking about for the coupler. And uh, it, it prevents the nut from, from moving is what that retaining plate is for. So let me show you something on the trailer. All right, here's under, here we are underneath the coupler. This is where the ball goes, of course. Here's the, uh, the ball lock part of it. And this is the retaining plate they're talking about that prevents the nut from moving. And they're saying you need to press this retaining plate up with one hand while you turn the nut adjustment nut with the other hand. And they say that that plate prevents the nut from moving. Well, let me show you something. How well do you think that uh, retaining plate's working? Right out of the box. How unsafe is that? So uh, I'm going to take this nut off, take this plate out, and put it in the vise and give it a little a couple taps such that it doesn't allow this nut to move. Very unsafe. Right out of the box, right from the factory, it's like that. Okay, so the trailer is completed. Uh, well, it's cle as completed as it'll get from out of the box. I still have to put a deck on it and everything. As for final thoughts, for the price, it's it's really not bad at all. Five hundred and thirty-nine dollars, five hundred and thirty something like that. Free shipping. Uh, goes together pretty easily. It took me. Uh, two afternoons to put it together and then another couple hours to finish messing around with the wiring and the grounds and everything. But as far as putting it together as per the manual, two afternoons, maybe three hours each, two hours. So you could easily put this together in a, in a weekend. Lots and lots of bolts, lots of tightening, that's sort of a pain in the ass, but there's no other way around it. Um, quality is pretty decent you have to make sure not to uh, whack your your hand on the inside edge of the C channel because it's very sharp it's just stamped out of a sheet of plate and then and then uh, formed into a C channel so edges are sort of sharp not a big deal once it's all together but something to watch out for the fasteners are decent they're all lock lock nuts nylon lock nuts they are all metric however so, um, not really a big deal at all. I just like I just prefer to use SAE fittings or uh, fasteners. <clears throat> I believe it, it was a uh, 16 millimeter and 17 millimeter nuts and bolts for the most part. Um, tires seem decent. They have nice tread. They're a good size. They're not too dinky and tiny like a lot of other uh, trailers you see. Like I said right in the beginning of the video, I wasn't really happy with that axle. It just seemed sort of goobered together. It would have been nice if it was one solid piece of metal or, I don't know. I really, I highly doubt I'll ever, ever have a problem with it. But I just don't particularly like it. As for the wiring, the wiring definitely leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, even though the price of the trailer isn't too bad, I would... It would have been nice if they gave you decent, you know, real automotive wiring. The wire itself is sort of low quality. The insulation is very plasticky. It's the kind of stuff if you bend it too sharply that it kind of turns white. The the, the pigment, it, it like stretches or something. And I think you know what I'm talking about. It, it's just very plasticky wire. It's not very flexible and, and rubbery. And, again, the connectors are absolute jokes. So... I fixed fixed all that all those connection issues, and the ground issue was also a big problem. They made no mention of that in the in the uh, instructions. At least not not that I saw. Maybe I missed it, but I highly doubt it. But it just stands to reason. I mean, you know, that joint there is paint to paint, and then it's paint to paint there, and all all the connections are are insulated with paint. 
So it's a miracle that that one light over there worked. So that wasn't a big deal, just a little bit of troubleshooting. You wouldn't really expect a brand new trailer to have that issue, but it's better than buying some piece of junk off Craigslist and having to go through everything and troubleshoot it and put new wiring in it, I guess. That's another thing, a lot of the trailers I found similar to this, even though they had decks and maybe sides on on Craigslist, they were about the same price. They were anywhere from four to six or eight hundred dollars. I found one for four hundred and twenty five, like this with sides, and the entire frame was rotten to pieces. It was just holding together, you know, it was holding together, but it definitely wasn't the way it was from the factory. So really not too bad of a deal. You know, that's really all I can think of. I think that just about sums it up. So, thanks for watching. I might do another couple of videos of me modifying the trailer to my liking. Like I said, with a, a larger deck and putting a deck on it. Um, if you're interested, leave me a comment and let me know. Or if you have any other questions, comments, as always, <clears throat> leave one below. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give me the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching and come back for more.